I'm going to beat this cone. Uh-huh. I'm going to beat them good. Uh-huh. I'm going to beat them so. Uh-huh. I'm going to beat them till the husk come off. When I get through, uh-huh. I'm going to cook this cone. Uh-huh. I'm going to cook them good. Uh-huh. I'm I was not in the military. I spent 34 years with the uh, United States Army Corps of Engineers in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, retired from the Corps of Engineers in 2000. Came to work for Delta Clean Steamboat Company. John E. Duggar is the captain of the Mississippi Queen. It's been exciting, it's been different, it's, it's a little different type of work than, than the barge line or the tow boating, we call it, and uh, it's, uh, you, get to, you get to meet with the passengers, you get to meet passengers from different parts of the world. We are maintaining the boat 24 hours a day. At night time we have junior engineer, whatever fails, he's trying to fix it. If he cannot fix, then he calls uh, specialist, a chief electrician, or refrigeration electrician, or first assistant, or finally me. So, are you in a constant state of maintenance? Yes, yes, 24 hours a day. Yes, sir. So you never know whether it's daytime or nighttime because you're always down here. Is that right? Yes, sir. I, I have unlimited amount of hours, working hours. I can. My name is Robert Dafford, D A F F O R D. I'm from Lafayette, Louisiana. Um, we have uh, been painting an average of four or five murals a year in this project. Uh, we are up to about number 18 now. There will be 32 pictures when we've finished. Is it a team of two? No, actually, there, I have five professional artists that work with me, uh, most of them full-time year-round. Um, we paint about 20 murals a year in six or seven or eight different cities every year. Most of them, most of our work is like this. Uh, uh, historical murals in a newly forming historic district at the riverfront of an old river town. And we are portraying the people, events, uh, subjects from their history that have an effect on who they are, how they got to be who they are. Uh, this project in uh, Vicksburg has, I've said, been going on about four or five years. And we're trying to, um, right now, I'm trying to uh, do a paint. I'm doing a painting of the bridges that cross the Mississippi River here. Well, that's where the magic is for me, is in creating the picture at the wall. We've done over 50 murals in Paducah, Kentucky. We're doing 20 at the riverfront at Cincinnati, 30 at the riverfront across from Louisville in Jeffersonville, Indiana. We're doing, we've, Maysville. We've done 60 murals in Portsmouth, Ohio. Um, we are starting this year a new project in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, where we're gonna do three giant murals about the uh, Shawnee village that was there, the beginning of the Revolutionary War, and uh, another uh, campaign that was there. He speaks about the product, and Mark Twain understood that as well. He wrote this. The face of the water and time became a wonderful book, a book that was a dead language to an uneducated passenger, but which spoke its mind to me without reserve, delivering its most cherished secrets as clearly as if it uttered them with a voice, and it was not a book to be read once and thrown aside, for it had a new story to tell every day. As you travel along a riverboat cruise with the Delta Queen Steamboat Company, you're really kind of getting back to a time when it was simpler and slower and a little more relaxed and I think it's good to have that every now and then in life to reconnect with your roots, to reconnect with the stories of our country's past especially traveling along out here traveling at such a slow pace I think a good analogy of it is maybe back in the old days when folks used to take a Sunday drive something like that because when you go out on the back roads and you're only going 20 or 30 miles an hour, everything is so beautiful and so pretty. And a lot of people wonder what's happening to that part of America. It's still here. It's just that so many of us spend all of our time going 70 miles an hour on the freeway. And when you're living in a 70 mile an hour life, you don't have a chance to notice the real beauty and joy that's waiting all around you. Here with us on board for seven days, you're going to slow down, and you're going to begin to notice things that you never would have noticed before. This monument of African descendants who participated in a Vicksburg campaign. In addition to Lyndon was in 1849, when Mrs. Jane Gustine Connor purchased Lyndon and moved here as a widow, 
with 13 children. No. She built the west wing in the back. It originally housed her woman kitchen on the first floor as well as keeping rooms while on the second floor were school rooms for her 13 children. Oftentimes Miss Connor probably would have had her friends in for tea in the, in the evening, early afternoon. And they would have green tea on one side and dark tea on the other. They would mix it to the strength they so desired into the crystal bowl. From there they would put it into the hot water that would have been in the teapot. After which they would have closed the tea caddy and locked it. Her tea was heavily taxed and kept under lock and key. The ceiling in here now is 14 feet. On the rest of the house, my ceilings are just 11 feet. The millwork in this room is 19th century, while in the rest of the house is 18th century. And you'll notice that the windows in the other part of the house are 12 over 12, where these are 6 over 6, because by the 19th century they could blow bigger glass than they could in the 18th century. And this is the pump cup, P-U-N-K-A-H, pump cup. It's an influence of our trade with India in the 19th century. There should be a card from that very center post that would go to the window, where the servants were standing and pulling and digging the mills. It not only fanned the breeze, but it shooed the flies from the table. For with the windows open and no screens, food on the table, naturally flies would come in. In fact, oftentimes they would have fringe or paper across the bottom of the punka, and that part would have been called the shoe fly. The furniture in here again are federal furnishings, and the table is set with old Paris china, which you see a great deal of in this part of the country. The flat silver on the table, as well as the tea service and coffee urn on the sideboard, is coin silver. Most of it is American. Swamp tours are where you can find alligator hunters. There's another small gator swimming on your left side. Yeah, if alligator meat tastes like fish, something's wrong. Stop <laughs> eating it, be eating fish. It should taste like meat, not fish. <laughs> That's a real hand, but this one didn't come out very well. The brain is small, very tiny compared to the size of the animal. Especially if they eat raw stellies. Welcome to the wonderful world of travel. I'm John Haggins, the Globetrotter. I'm here on the Mississippi, and this is the Mississippi Queen. I've been traveling for the past week, visiting plantation houses, part of American history, and also the levees which are protecting the cities. Today, we're in Natchez, and we're gonna go out and explore the town. I'm Cynthia Barnes, and I'm from Natchez, Mississippi. And right now, we're standing under the hill <laughs> at, um, I'm a senior at Alcorn State University in Lorman, Mississippi. I'm majoring in history. I plan to teach history or maybe elementary school. Um, right now, I'm getting ready to go down to the casino and gamble a little bit. This is the country. It's a rural area. Um, we have backyard barbecues. We sit around, maybe drink beer on the weekends. <laughs> I like blues music, um, R&B. Stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Anything. We like crawfish, boiled shrimp. Um, you can see we're kind of thick out here. Um, we do stuff like that. We ride dirt bikes. This is the Mississippi Queen. I've been traveling for the past week, visiting plantation houses, part of American history, and also the levees which are protecting the cities. Traveling on the Mississippi has been an eye-opening experience. It's so tranquil, it's so peaceful. It's the kind of experience that I think can be shared with a family, with friends, and you know, the best part is the relaxation and the cultural side and the historical side, of course, where you learn so much about this country and how it all began between the French and the British. Until next week, I'm John Haggins, the Globetrotter. I'll see you then. Until next week, remember, get up, get out, and travel. But don't say nothing, he just...